so welcome back uh, sorry that uh, it's uh, the music can you hear the music yeah just wait a little bit now sound is working image is working and uh, everything seems working so I wanted to continue so this is the sorry I apologize for this technology we have too many people and things doesn't work so here yeah. um, we have here um, the topic of the this uh, this webcast is the uh, nurturing sacred community so I thought about this for uh, for quite a bit and also I have been uh, you know working with uh, communities from quite early uh, time last 20 years and uh, also when I was much younger and then now for last 20 years been working and also do uh, I do have some experiences and also I can clearly see uh, much more to learn much more personally much more to learn uh, much more to grow much more to work in the community and uh, I truly believe that um, uh, one's own practice is a genuine level of one's own practice is the ways to uh, bring uh, the practices back into the community uh, uh, particularly in 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 uh, how you say in the meaning of service so to bring back services to back to the community is is that all comes from one's own practices so uh, this this webcast is particularly i intend to to help the groups of people who are you know trying to come together with very heartfelt intentions to 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 people who want to come together connect with each other uh, uh, form a community uh, have a practices support each other in a healthy environment and a healthy way of living the way of thinking and possibly uh, having uh, at the teacher that admire admire to, to be around to work learn from so this is the dream we all have sometime uh, our dreams are also like a mm, can be a little bit like unrealistic so sometime that the dream has to be merge uh, how you say uh, uh, be more real realistic uh, and and when because there's no place on the earth that you can go and there is no problems that everybody is happy smiling no tension no conflict nothing that place on this earth i haven't seen yet and i do not expect to see it one very soon or in near future unless i achieve body of light and in in get some another places beyond this this planet and this earth so it's so that kind of some sense of fantasy uh, i think it's important not to have it because if you are having challenges in one community and trying to run away from an, in another community you might face the same challenges unless there is some changes happen in you in between it's like the same situation like if you are in having a really bad time in one relationship uh, primarily because of you then if you're trying to get rid of that relationship and go elsewhere trying to find a perfect guy or the perfect woman and i think uh, it's pretty difficult to find that person unless you are change in between you have grow so much uh, with in your relationship with those pains and those conflicts and you are totally different individual than one who have those challenging relationship then possible you will find find a right person and that right person is not so much a right person because you became a right person you have changed you have trans transformed yourself because there is no no place no place or person or community you can go unless you have changed yourself so the same way i truly believe that the way we can look the building a sacred community definitely it has to do something with one's own practices 
So the practices that I have been teaching last few years, then I will speak a little bit also today as far as uh, building a sacred community is concerned. It's very much to do with our practices. So our practice should not only pr we practice on the cushion, but these practices should, should become very alive in a real situation in our life. So for example, I'll give a few examples. Um, so three things that I can talk first. Uh, being very open. So like in uh, when I talk about the inner refuge, unbounded space in a Dzogchen teaching, we talk about the view is very unbounded, unbounded view or tawa tadal, like a limitless view, unbounded view. So basically that translate into in a simple way, the very open heart. So openness, being very open. So what does that mean, being very open? Of course, in the building of communities concerned, being very open means as whenever there is more than two people, three people, four, five people, a diff people with different opinions, people with different backgrounds, people with a different level of knowledge, understanding of teaching, experiences of life, the opinion is not going to be matched all the time. Diversity will be so much there, which is, in fact, the beauty of the community, that beauty of the Sangha, Sangha can grow with those diversity, those differences will reflect its the beauty. So, but even though that is how it is, but unless you are, unless you have some sense of openness towards somebody else's opinion, it's not going to work. The openness toward somebody's opinion, or somebody's suggestions, will bring more knowledge, more idea, or might teach you something that the, maybe the direction that you are going might not be the right direction, might give you some uh, hints that saying you have to think it over. But if you are close, if you are close, and out of that closeness, you react to somebody saying, showing that somebody's, what somebody said is not good enough, or valuable enough, or that you are not experienced, making negative comment towards somebody's suggestions, opinion, differences. These are the situation creates a conflict in the community. And particularly people who are in a role, in responsible, people who are decision-making a place, like a board of, board of members of board, or executive person, or people are coordinators, or people are guide guiding practices umzes, people are who are you know um, supposed to be a teacher or a, uh, or chant guide or whatever position is you are in the position to guiding and helping other people and definitely there need to, to be some openness is the key in the community because I see all the time again and again that lack of that op op openness in on a higher level in organization it creates a lot of challenges and conflicts uh, of course we are not enlightened being we have we feel that kind of human um, limitations sometimes we feel like a like a uneasiness uh, with some particular personality uh, we don't feel completely easy to open towards somebody it's normal Nothing wrong about it. But as long as you recognize that's how you're feeling, you're feeling a lack of openness to this person, the way this person is talking, but this has nothing to do with this person. I need to, to work with my openness. Moment you do that, moment you do that, your heart opens, your connection deepens, your awareness expands, your connection with that other person opens even in that immediately you see uh, some shift and changes in the other person other person begin to be change their behaviors what they would say they begin to change what they're saying where they're behaving they begin to change their behavior so openness is the number one as a key as as i always been talking about in a refuge the unbounded sacred space within us the more you get closer to that place in yourself, the more you are able to see through that to others. 
the more you see others through that eye, the receptivity, the creativity, the solutions, the guidance will naturally arises from that place. So I think it's very important to recognize that quality number one. The quality number two, which is being very aware. So basically openness first, awareness second, being very aware. Of course, in the teaching and the practices, in the practices of inner refuge, we talk about that awareness is a very specific awareness. We are very unique awareness. We're talking about self-awareness, being aware of yourself. In this context, in the building of sacred community, I'm, I'm referring to slightly different but same principle. What I'm referring to here is being aware. It does not mean that, you know, only being aware of what you are feeling, but being aware of your surroundings. So it's just seeing how you are impacting your surroundings. How being aware of the other person, being aware of the situation, being aware of how other person is feeling, being aware of how other other person's pain, being aware of other person is, is uh, going through challenges. So be the expanding that awareness from the self, from individual to a collective space. Because the first one, when we are talking about being very open, it's also, I'm not only talking about just in yourself, from individual space to a collective space. You have to, being open means if you have only focus on how you feel, particularly how limited you feel, how anxiety you feel, how fear you are feeling, and you are always operating from that place of pain and fear and anxiety, that is very individual, a pain body space. When we say, in the number one, when we say be very open, we are talking expanding from that, transcending that space to a collective space. Space in which you are able to see others. So able to see others, able to feel others, able to see others need is very important key in in the building a sacred community because if you are not because community means it's more than one person if it's not only about you then you don't have to pay attention to how other feels but if you're building something together with somebody you have to know very much and feel very much how other people are feeling so it's very much about expanding um, the awareness from from the individual to more like a, a collective space of others. So collective space. Just just for imagine, you know, like if you, for, for example, just think about it. Those you are in the position working in the community, just think about particularly if you are facing some challenges with some other people, Just feel that you, how you're feeling. Just imagine how the other persons are feeling. Imagine how other persons are feeling. You know very well the how you feel how you feel with your limitations, your challenges, your pain, your confusion, uh, your opinion of others, your opinion of the uh, other person's, what other person said, other person did, what other person should do. You know very well about it. But do you have any sense what other person is going through? Of course, in the teaching, when we talk about compassion, uh, bodhicitta, we are also talking about empathy and understanding of others' pain. Uh, you are only able to reflect on other person's pain if you are open. If you are not open, you cannot look other person's pain, you will not see other person's pain, you will not feel other person's pain, you are not going to have any empathy toward other person, so you are going to only insist your own view, action, speech, ideas, 
So, so number two, it's very important in that sense, being very aware of the collective space and collective situations and other person. Number three, number three is very much like feeling the warmth. For, for example, if you are open, if you are aware and connected to yourself, naturally there will be more sense of warmth. That warmth basically means you're feeling comfortable. You're feeling okay. You're not feeling threat. You're not feeling challenge. When you feel like that, there is a more space for other events, other situations, other people's pain. So that, that warmth, so it's very important to, to experience that warmth. Again, you will experience that warmth more if you feel more open and if you feel more aware, then you will feel more warmth. Because warmth, through warmth, you do things. Your actions of body comes, comes through the, that warmth. When it comes through that warmth, your speech, when it comes from that warmth, your imagination, your thoughts, your creativity, when it comes from that warmth, there's more receptive. Because everybody is attracted to those warmth. When we walk in the street, when you see a warmth from somebody's eye, you're attracted to that person. When you hear a warmth in somebody's speech, you're attracted to that person. When you see a warmth in somebody, somebody's imagination, in somebody's thought, you feel attraction to that person. So our own actions of body, speech, mind should manifest from that warmth. And the warmth should be there if we are more aware and more open. So these three qualities are in a way like a space, awareness and action. And internally, on a very higher level, we can talk about, you know, level of three kayas in a very, in, in, on a very, uh, how you say, um, ordinary, in a very simple level. I'm, I'm trying to uh, bring same, same similar qualities of those high view in building of sacred community. And, uh, in, um, you know, we have been... Uh, working with these quality in the three door program. So three door program is the program that I have started. And I, I see we have over 100 people are going through training this moment around the world. And I see incredible impact, transformation of their lives because they are working with the specific things in their life with these views. So, so, so basically, now when I go back again, so these are, you know, practices of, practices of openness, practices of awareness, practices of warmth. These are our spiritual practice and these are the practices that we should bring into building sacred community on a very active level. I, you know, personally, I know like, uh, you know, we, we, how you say, uh, when we do retreats, when we teach, we always talk about these principles. In organizations, uh, sometimes we don't apply them enough in organization. For example, in Gompa, you would practice them. In the office, you lose them. But from Gompa to office, it's important to bring. How you bring it? But somehow, as as a, uh, you know, as a group, as administration, as people who are leading that group, should actively implement those principles in the community. So they are make sure the the people who work, in some sense, there is a little bit more space, a little bit more time to connect with each other. Not like always work, 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 work. But there is there those time moments to connect 
those are necessary and then the other thing is you know sometime i think it's very helpful that you know sometime people who do work in the community building community do face a lot of challenges also i know because as i also working in the community you have to deal so many different kind of people and everybody comes to you they come thinking they are priority and they don't know you have already seen 100 people priority before and 100 people are waiting behind they think the middle one they think they are most important priority and you're really it's very very challenging sometimes when you do face challenges what do you do i always tell to take three pills white pill red pill blue pill i know you might be wondering what 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 is that white pill red pill blue pill means just for a moment feel the stillness so instead of drawing attention to whatever is bothering you that particular moment shift your attention bring attention back to your body and be aware and second and when you are challenged again instead of immediately reacting with a speech be aware of the silence listen and feel the silence even that person is sitting right in front of you ready for your response for a moment few second it's okay to ignore that draw your bring your attention inward to that silence just a few second you hear it you feel it it change you it changes it changes how you will then respond to that situation to that person third the blue pill the spaciousness of the mind you feel challenging situation immediately contracting your body your heart recognize bring your attention to your mind your heart feel the spaciousness so immediately whenever this more challenging moment happen shift attention inward and draw attention to that stillness in the body silence in the speech spaciousness in the mind few second and this inner stillness inner silence inner spaciousness will help you how to act from that stillness how to speak from that silence how to imagine how to find solution from that spaciousness of the mind it will help you as i said even few second it will change the game now few other things in as far as uh, building the uh, sacred community and sometime you know when when you are in the position uh, uh with a good heart with a good intention uh, with a lot of effort you are there trying to help a community but sometime you your you you your your situation maybe it does not fully allows you to help for whatever reason karmically maybe it's not ready or the circumstance time is not right or the place is not right or that group is not right for you it's possible when you, how do you know that well you clearly you know that when you feel conflicts 
you feel conflict with the teacher, you feel conflict with the uh, administrators, or you feel conflict with the group, or you you feel some sense of conflict with the attitude of the group or the behavior of the group. It's possible when it's when when that happens, then you have to see yourself. Is it a, is this a place for me, or it's really like a in this case. My good intention has no place here. So maybe some other places or maybe another time might be right time, right place. And I think it's very helpful to any individuals to be aware and trying to, instead of creating a lot of harms in that group, to that people, who probably don't need, as you can see, they, they are already confused enough. Slowly respecting them and respecting yourself and becoming invisible, as going into the rainbow body, disappearing. Might be more helpful. Because any time, I mean, this is the nature of how it is, any time... I was just talking, uh, recording this morning, and also I was just saying in, the, in another group, yeah, that I think as a human being, the criticism, you know, any time when you criticize anybody, in the end, it doesn't help so much. When your good advice didn't help them, how your criticism can help them. When these people are not open to your heartfelt opinion, how they can be open to your criticism? No way. So, knowing that, even not criticizing. Now, on the other hand, you know, people, people who are also in the, in the Sangha who are working, in the community working, sometimes I think, you know, what I call it, pain speech. A pain speech where you... You know, like sometimes kind of you're anxious and you say something right in front of somebody, it's okay, just some something like that. But very negative, kind of deep rooted pain speech, negative pain speech. That like a really like a talking bad about somebody and telling somebody else something about somebody. Interfering this bringing some disharmony between these two friendships and between these two projects they are trying to do. So those are really harmful speech. And deep inside, I don't think anybody wanted to do that. Anybody, if you know how, how much your pain speech is actually creating a suffering, confusion, disharmony in that group, if you know, I'm repeating this again, if you know, I don't think anybody would ever do it. Unfortunately, when we are unconsciously, effortlessly expressing our pain speech without being aware at all the consequences of how much negativity it's bringing in the community. And there are some people who are big responsible for those things. They are not aware of it. I think any... In, I can say myself, I can say anybody, as a human being, we all do that. We all do that. But sometimes we are more conscious, we change, we really recognize what we're doing and not trying to do that. Others, they are not conscious, they keep on doing it. So, so it's very important to be aware of the pain speech because the pain speech is one of the worst obstacle building a sacred community. As I said about pain speech, I will speak a little bit more also in a sense of pain body. It's also something like, uh, you know, sometimes you might be in a position of helping the community to nourish the community, to grow the development of the community. 
But maybe what, what you're trying to do there is not working very well. But you are, you know, you somehow, you somehow are becoming a problem for others. Uh, I sometimes, you know, I can, I'm not, as I'm speaking here, I'm not saying, oh, I'm the teacher and I know the, all the answer and I am speaking. I'm not saying that I'm just sharing my own experiences. As I said earlier, you know, for the last 20 years, for sure, my views have changed over the years. What it means to me to build a community, how to work, changed. Some, some things are completely opposite where I used to do and where I do now. Even the purpose of doing it. So I'm myself in the process of, you know, like growing, learning, every day learning more. So as I'm saying, when you feel that you are becoming an obstacle for something or somebody in the building of community, and I think it's also very important to be aware of that. You're occupying a space, and that space requires some actions, requires amount of clarity, consistency and you do not have those you don't have enough drive enough fire enough clarity but you're still occupying that space so sometime when, when you when you when you when, also it's very painful to just to be there like just because you you're trying to you are there to do something which you are not doing it and you also feel bad about not doing what you're supposed to do it's a very bad position to be for oneself as much as it's a bad for the group to growth of the group, because if you, in a right way, dignify way, if you leave that position, give that space for somebody else, people will remember you, respect you the way you do, way you did, and you will see as a result of the way you did, you give somebody else a beautiful another new place for new new fire. I said the uh, fresh fire, fresh energy. You see some a flow of energy is moving through that, and that that beautiful outcome is came out of what you did with your awareness. So I think uh, giving space for others when the space is not fully utilized as role that you take. I think that is also I think very important to do that, and. Another issue I think sometimes I feel is important also to personal issues should not become a collective issues because sometimes there are people who have a, a personal problems. Uh, people, one might have a personal problem with the, one of the members, one of the key members maybe possible. So if you have a, one of the problem with one of the key members, and those key members do change. They're not like a permanent position. They come and go. And if you do have those, sometimes those situations, you, people, what they do, it's a personal problem with somebody. But then it, they, they spread that out to some other people, that personal problem, then it becomes two people's problem, three people's problem, four people's problem, and you're clearly expanding that, those problems. Of course, if there are certain issues Need to do, need to do, uh, bring uh, has it brought up in the group more than the personal issues. Then I understand that, but there are very often personal issues. Then people make it into a, a group group problem. So I think it's a very harmful thing to do. And also on the on the on contrary, sometimes. If there is some problems of the group of the people, that should not affect one's own practices. Also, I see all that sometime that happen often, is that a person who have received the teachings, who have practices, practicing for a long time, but they don't get along with some individuals and in some situations, they give it up everything, 
And everything, all the beautiful things they ever said before, oh, this community is beautiful, these people are beautiful, this practice is beautiful, this practice changed my life and this and that. And one day, they are, they're cut from all those expressions they said. Everything what they said didn't mean anything because probably was not even true, maybe. If it's true, then it's very sad. That point, they're cut with everything because they have some problem with some people. Ability to distinguish one's own spiritual practice, commitment, dedication to a, a normal circumstances, organizational, a personal conflicts, not to mix all those things. I think it's very important. Able to keep separate. That uh, primarily it's very, very important for one's own spiritual growth. Because you don't want to affect your practice because there is a, some problems between some people. You want to keep it separate. Yeah, so I think uh, maybe um, I'm quite sure maybe there are uh, questions here uh, from, from the group here. Uh, because uh, uh, particularly I know like uh, if uh, Sangha members or, or like people who are trying to, um, you know, trying to build a sacred community. And uh, of course, any advices, anybody have something to share, also uh, welcome to share your knowledge and your wisdom. And also uh, welcome to if there are some questions that you wanted to ask. How are we doing with we have 430 people watching. Okay. And I'll let you know when the question comes through. So we have uh, um, about uh, 400 computers uh, watching. So again, I'm very happy to uh, do this. And uh, lately, it has been quite frequently. So uh, very happy to able to do this service. what have you found to be the best way to stay away from group group think or organization mentality and still keep the organization strong so the best way to stay away from a mentality of the organization while still keeping the organization strong so the question is how to keep organization going while keeping the organization mentality. Uh, I have some idea what that means. I'm not sh very sure what exactly you mean by that. But uh, yes, absolutely. You know, um, as I have also been feeling, you know, uh, to creating too many organizations absolutely unnecessary because when we are able to if we are able to uh, organize well as far as the dharma is concerned if you are able to organize well um, and the teaching logistic and uh, all those things without organization of course i think it's the best but but some level when it grows to the some level administrative wise you know financial wise and everything and everything then you got to have it you know it's just doesn't give you a choice when when you have that then again you know i think the principles that i was sharing again before really like a you know when you, whenever you're trying to be in the organization uh, not to think about it's, it's a group it's a it's a collective space it's a collective service so 
I personally, even though I have also created a lot of organizations, and and, um, and I do trying to do my best to trying to take care of them, but I do not identify myself with organization. I only trying to serve the organization. I, I live in my own home. I only come to the ret- my centers only days that I teach here. And uh, other than that, I live in my own home with my own family and uh, away from the from the location and the space. So I d- the reason why I, d- I have done right from the beginning and because I do not you know don't don't want to identify completely with that. I look at that organization as a sacred organization. It's the only place I go to serve, to help, and not to think it's mine. It belongs to me. I am the one, and n- not at all. And in fact, you know, like we we trying to bring all the teachers possible, trying to make other things happen there. So, uh, and especially for. Uh, students or people who are in administration administrative level I think anybody who comes there everybody should really think I am here to serve I am here because that's true you know when we go to the organizations is unless unless it's also become part of your job then most of the time in a Dharma people who are working there it maybe is a partly their kind of job uh, kind of make uh, has a livelihood and also they wanted to serve so we all have a clearly wanting to serve something that that is in deep in us everybody have that i know that and but sometimes that 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 fire that intention is not surface enough strong enough fiery enough but when that is there then you don't care anything you only care to serve you don't care if you have a title you don't care if you're earning something not earning something you just care that it what you're doing is effective and beneficial to others so that sense of service i think i think it's very important you know one time i was talking with somebody um and this person said to me i said how hard it is to live in the monastery this western person has, i asked how hard it is to live in the monastery in india and he said uh, of course, sometimes it's hard. Uh, it's a, I grow up in a completely different situation. The food is different. The mentality is different. The environment is different. And but I I'm not, I did not come here to entertain myself. I did not come here to eat party. I did not come here to do all that. I came here to serve, and I'm fully able to have opportunity to serve His Holiness, and I am happy because of that service service is what it is so when we come in the organization uh, particularly when we're trying to build the organization when you come and when you're really i try to identify with that then i think it's always a challenging challenging because you know uh, the, when the i the i the i the i when it comes in any place it always creates a little bit more problem a question um, what happens when people in the sangha stop practicing and the energy isn't there to practice anymore so the question about what happens in if the a group stop practicing or most of the group stop practicing so the practice of energy is no longer there well very good question you know i see that kind of group all the time so you know sometime Personally, I have also uh, faced those situations, uh, been in those situations. So sometime in some place, it's not worth trying anything. Let it go. Let it go. So don't put too much energy in those places. But I think it's it's kind of hard to make a little distinction that do a question about do i really need to, to bring put some energy there or do i really need let it go i think it's a very very good question but when you really feel that you have tried everything you can and it's not going anywhere i my recommendation is be free from it let it go enjoy yourself 
and practice with yourself and find and that might be a way to find a place where you can feel more fire more fire and more energy place so you don't not wasting your time here's a sort of a related question someone has asked um, dear beloved master Tenzin how to find the right sacred community or sangha for oneself please how do you find it so the question is, how do uh, one finds the right sacred community for oneself? So that is, it's kind of a li little difficult question. You know, I think uh, each person might have very different background, very different cultural background, upbringing background. You know, uh, what what it means for you, for a, a sacred community. And so on. So I think it's a uh, very difficult to uh, answer this question very in a general way. But I think um, nowadays, especially with the internet and website, so I think in a way, uh, you know, rather than in like in Tibet, you have to travel one month to find one group and another month to find another group. You have to see those people, know about them. You just Google it. You see the community. You read what they're doing. You see what they're doing anything whatever the closest match to you then you just take a trip there and see if it, if, if it feels or if it feels the way it's supposed to feel to you then maybe it's a good place you kind of experiment that way other than that i think it's a really difficult to say to uh, how to find it so i have no particular advice then google it but bottom line <laughs> Question from Stephen Humphreys. Uh, he asks, "How do we define negative speech? Aren't openness and honesty, uh, and to challenge people, vital? Maybe sometimes that that can appear negative." Yeah. So it's a very good question. Uh, so somebody asking, uh, when 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 uh, when the when the situation is where you do need to do a challenge because uh, you your voice might be important your voice might be uh, uh, helpful but uh, uh, how would, would that if even though it appears to be negative or uh, pain speech basically it's asking how to define the pain speech okay so I think apart from going through all the detail the what, way I define the pain speech is the pain speech fundamentally luck clarity and awareness it is a speech which is a driven by condition addiction uh, unconscious patterns or behavior and yeah it just it's driven it just you don't pain speech you don't plan to say you know how many times think about one person that you know who complains who has a negative speech do you really believe that person has a plan day before say tomorrow I'm going to see Stephen so I'm going to talk half an hour all those horrible things to him do you really believe that person made a plan all the detailed plan to say those things no that person spontaneously effortlessly unconsciously saying those things that's called pain speech and we clearly know when the pain speech comes out, you can see it has a, has a sound of lost. It's lost, disconnected, disturbing. You know that. When a, when a, a voice comes out, uh, which is very against somebody else's voice or somebody else's opinion, when it comes out, you see a level of openness there. You see a level of respect there. You see a certain level of the warmth there. You see a certain level of caring, a care that some, that some deep inside there is inside there wanting to do something good that f you feel it. Even though it's saying totally opposite, you feel it. Of course, sometimes it's a little harder to feel it because it's saying something ag against you, but it might take you know few minutes it might take few hours it might take few days it might take few weeks but you'll hear it 
that speech was not a pain speech. It was caring speech. It was painful to who is listening, but it was not pain speech because it was full. That speech was full with openness, full with that awareness, full with clarity and the warmth. And when you, when you trying to say something, you know, for example, let's say this way, uh, a parents trying to give advice to children, a teacher trying to give advice to students, a f one friend is trying to give advice to another friend. We know that if your advice have a place or not. If you're feeling challenged for all these years, what you're trying to tell your children, your student, your friend, your business partner, it's not working. So sometimes it's good to be aware of that. Maybe you need to be more open. Maybe you need to give them a little bit more time to breathe. Maybe you need to give them a little more space to figure out. Not constant advice. But when you feel it's the right time, somebody is asking something to you, not you're imposing something to, on others, but somebody is asking some help. Then you go inside that open place, that silence place, that spacious place, that warmth place, and just gently allow the speech, the imagination, the advice, whatever is coming out as a form of communication. Yeah. Um, here's a question. Um, how can the leader of a team encourage all members of the team to give creative input to the team's project and not just rely on the leader's ideas? So how can the leader encourage all the members to give creative, creative input? So the question is very good question. Its question is how how does the leader uh, encourage to the group to come up with the creative uh, ideas, creative energies, rather than rather than um, depending on the leader or, uh, or is it that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so rather than depending on a leader, so of course I think um, that's very very good question, and I think. It's very important in the sacred community, even though sometimes it appears to be that um, very often, uh, I was just thinking or reflecting last couple of days, sometime in Tibet, you know, sometimes Dharma, Lama is more important than Dharma. It seems like it's wrong. Lama should not be more important than the Dharma. Lama should not be more important than the teaching. Lama should not be more important than the practice. Because sometimes in Tibet, it seems, as people said, Lamaism seems like a Lama is a little bit too important sometimes. But important is has to come. If somebody feels it, genuinely feels it, they can see Lama as their Buddha. I don't have a problem with that. But in literature, sometimes a little bit too much emphasis of importance of Lama, I do not agree with that. So I think in some sense, either it's a leader or lama, the focus should not never be in one person. Because focus should, focus should never be in one person or one individual. The focus should be a collective space and collective wisdom and collective purpose. The sacred community collective purpose is to awaken the group, awaken the community, awaken through, through the wakefulness, whatever that group is doing to awake other people, that is the collective purpose, not just to follow one individual and, and that. So, so I think what, as a leader, what should, one should do is, is to give more space, to give more space to others, to find, of course, that means, that is also kind of sometimes, I know in situations that I have, communities that I have worked with, and sometimes it's also a little dangerous. Sometimes you, you when it's a not right timing, you have a people, some crazy people comes in and kind of uh, charismatic 
and op opinionated and manipulative and they come in and influence everybody and bring a lot of mess. But when the community is healthy enough and ready, I think it's really important to give a lot of space to do their own and, you know, even just go away from them for time being so that they can figure it out themselves. Like a ch children, you have sometimes, you leave it them uh, without the parents. They, they, ha they go through challenges, but then they have to, they have to figure out themselves how to, how to be. So I think giving a lot of space is very important. interpersonal challenges uh, how do you face these challenges is it better to face them privately or to bring it up in the group so the is a very good question a question is when the group has a um, um, problem inter interpersonal problems is it important is it good to bring into group or it is is it imp uh, is it better to resolve on on one to one private base of course it's a very difficult question to answer i think uh, because there's so many circumstances might be in the same situation and some circumstances might be very important to bring into the group and other situation might be imp better not to bring in the group because it's it just it, it's easy to resolve as i said earlier individual problems should not become a group problem two persons problem should not become a group problem but if it may be the two persons problem is a group's group's a problem then it need to, to bring into group if the two persons problem is only two persons problem then absolutely should not bring to the group unless you want a group problem similar question uh, how to maintain creativity potential and openness in the community projects how to maintain this she's saying too often obstacles like control and fear block projects from flowering in a collaborative way is it better to develop some projects individually until they are ripe rather than trying to do it all together all the time so maybe begin a project quietly because sometimes fear, control, and other obstacles make it so things just don't happen in the group. So the question is, should, should, should somebody start a project individually sometimes? I'm not exactly sure the question, but at least the way the question has been asked is saying, should one uh, start the project individually uh, because the project often ha comes with a lot of fears so that if you bring that project into the group that fear might interfere the group too so yeah if, if that is the question yes i think you're basically answering your question i think that um that you if, if, a, if there's a lot of fear of doing it i think it's better to you know uh trying to work with yourself and trying to work with that project unless if there is a team of people who, who is really like a willing to help you through your through your project and trying to work with your fear and help and then make it as a group project then in that case i think you will explore working with others but other than that then i think i would uh, recommend more working with yourself you know here's a question uh, when i am the teacher and a student has big resistance, what can I do? R resistance, any particular resistance? Yes. So this question is again a difficult question to answer. I'm not uns uns understanding fully the question, uh, but the question is, if I am the teacher and students are resistant, then what, what I should do? Yeah. What I should do? <laughs> okay, well, and. Uh, the difficult part for me to answer their question is, I think, what they're resistant of, you know. So that, if, without knowing that, I think it's very difficult to to answer. So generally speaking, um, I only prefer to personally, as a teacher, I prefer only to teach people who don't who don't have a resistance to hearing me. So if there is a people who have resistance to hear me, I say please go and relax on the beach 
not listen to me because that would be much more fun than listening to me. <laughs> so I prefer not to have a resist, resisting people be there that much, you know, because teach, tell them maybe there are other places are better un unless, unless they're able to work with their resistance and be open because resistance is very difficult to carry. Because I think uh, if you think about one of the most heavy weight that every individual carries in this world, in this samsara, is the resistance towards something. You look, if you look at, as all of you who are hearing me, you look at your life, there is some resistance toward life, toward work, toward better eating, toward health, to, toward somebody, there is a resistance. It's very heavy. If you live with that resistance, it's really heavy. That is like a pain body. It's, it's very heavy. We know very well when you're on a treadmill, when you're doing exercise on the gym, doing exercise, you, sometimes when I have that, I really practice with that. I can try to see the distinction between my m physical movement and my mind's resistance. It's very interesting to watch because moving on, moving on the treadmill in itself is much fun. But with that resistance, it's pain. Both are pain then. So, so somehow, if you're able to get rid of that resistance, body enjoys the movement. Body meant to move. But with resistance, it's difficult. So with resistance, doing any movement is very difficult. So anyway, I think maybe it's a little too long answer for that short question, but okay. <laughs> Um, you talked before about how some people can turn, make their personal problems into a group problem. And um, Sharon Weitz was asking if you can uh, give an example of how somebody might make their personal problem into a group problem that she didn't think she understood. So the question is the 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 comment that I was making earlier that uh, personal uh, problem making as a group problem. Uh, so somebody is asking, uh, explain a little bit more. What is exactly that means? Give one example. So, for example, uh, situations where you know we all sometimes wanting to belong somewhere because in a way in the building a community is very much the reason why we go there we wanted to belong somewhere we wanted to be part of something and particularly we wanted to be part of where we practice part of where we, our heart is our spiritual practice is but sometimes it becomes a little bit more than just our practice our spiritual practice it becomes more a place for belong your ego that ego need a strong place in that group. Moment you get into that group, you're, some people are less interested in the teaching, less, even less interested in the teacher. They they very much get interested in the position. Or I am I am I need to be closest to the teacher. I need to be closest in the top of the organization. I need to be placed in the where the decisions are made, where the policies are made. Somehow, the reason why they really came there, they forgot. They completely forgot. And when they do that, very often those people do not succeed. They always face challenges because it's just they do face challenges. And when they face challenges because of that with some individuals, because there are maybe some another people similar like themselves are present in that group too. And they can't run into a conflict with those people. And maybe the other person is a little bit more skillful than this person is, the person number A is. So person number B is a little bit more skillful, the person number B is a little less skillful, but the two people have a problem. Then the person number A start to make this problem bigger. You know, sometimes it happens that even in the situations that people, as a teacher for myself, you know, like people felt some conflict with me, uh, just because sometimes they feel conflict in the group. 
And it puts a very difficult position as a teacher. It's a very difficult position. If your teacher remains silent, si silence is a problem. If teacher have to make some comment, it's very difficult to make any comment on it because it's everything has something to do with their own personal processes. Each person has to recognize and awake and find their solution to resolve things. So, so silence becomes problem too sometimes. So, so sometimes, so those individual thing becomes a group thing, you know. So I think it's a, in, in a way it's a sad that one what how one person brings a lot of negativity to all the other people who are like just beautifully fresh and clear and a lot of a uh, lot of enthusiasm and trying to grow with their practices and then it's kind of effect that it's, it's sad to see sometimes those things. Balbina from Mexico asks, uh, Rinpoche, what do you think about the right relationship between the practitioner and the Bun teacher? What attitude should the practitioner have toward the teacher? The question is, the, what kind of attitude toward your teacher? I think and the attitude toward uh, your teacher is, uh, I think, if it's possible to hold in high place, uh, a pure place, uh, so not to you know uh, not to mix with one's personality. Uh, so basically, um, like for example, not to think your teacher is your your teacher is not your lover. Your teacher is not your husband. Your teacher is not your. You can be a friend, but not like a friend, normal sense of friend. Your teacher is not your business partner. Your your teacher is not maybe even your therapist in some way. So so you don't want to uh, trying to build with your teacher those kind of relationships because teacher is not. So if you you if you want if you want a neighbor, then you should find a neighbor, not trying to make your teacher your neighbor. Because I know some some people will say, "Oh, I, I would like to give you this piece of land if you promise to move to my uh, next to my town." You know what they're looking is not a teacher; they're looking a neighbor, or some. You know, so there 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 are people who kind of fall in love with the teacher. It's the wrong person, or to, or or people expect teacher to be all the time available there or something like that, like a 1-800 number or something like that, is the wrong person. Well, you have, you have to hold the teacher in a much more bigger space. If I go, if, for example, myself, when I go to Nepal to meet my teacher, you know, I grew up with my teacher like in the last 40 years, and just since age 10, of course, when I was 10 years old, I needed a kind of little bit, it was, there was a little more like a sense of father relationship, but it's not like I was looking for a father. You know, last 40 years, in the, there's some dynamic has changed, but my teacher is always teacher, not who kind of helped me to grow, helped me, uh, helped me to, how you say, uh, not like as a role of father, even though there's a sense of father was there, but it was teacher. So I think... Um, The teacher is beyond time and space. When the teacher dies, that should not affect. When the teacher is not in the same location, that should not affect. If, the, if you don't hear teacher that frequently, that should not affect. If it's not affecting you, you have a right kind of relation to that teacher. Because some, maybe you have heard enough, learned enough, Maybe not necessary to hear much more that often. If it's possible, it's a luxury. You feel, okay, wonderful, I can have opportunity. But if it's not possible, you sh it should not affect. If it's not affecting you, then you have a good relationship with that teacher. If absence of the teacher, not hearing teacher is affecting you, you don't have a good relationship with that teacher. You need good neighbor or good partner. Maybe that's what somebody is looking for. Okay? <laughs>
Uh, Nima Tsering uh, says, uh, in a teaching by Menri Lopan Rinpoche recently, he, 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 Menri Lopan was talking about trusting the teacher after a period of time. And he says, with leaders, don't you, uh, Sangha leaders, don't you need to trust at some point to allow them to lead? So having trust not only in the teacher, but also trust in the, whoever is um, leading your Sangha. So the question is uh, that Pilup uh, Tilenya um, the main teacher in Menri Monastery, uh, in one of his teachings, he was talking about uh, the trusting teacher, emphasis on a trusting teacher. The question from this person is, uh, is it not important to also trust to the leaders who are uh, in the group, who are leading, because uh, they are in a role to lead? Yes, of course. Um, I think uh, um, absolutely. I think in a way we need to, to trust everything, everybody in our life. Tr when you the the meaning of trust is not always has to a real meaning of trust is not always depend on outcomes. When say somebody says I trust my life, that means. Whatever life gives, I'm happy with that. It doesn't mean I trust my life and it should give only happiness to me. And that's not a trust. That's demand. So if you are, if you're some sense when you trust somebody, when you moment you trust somebody, then you just trust. You don't demand so much from that person. I think that that sense of trusting is also helps the other person who you're trusting to to fully kind of manifest their qualities too. So we should, obviously, we should trust the leader and people should, uh, how you say, trust among each other. You know, um, people should, as I said earlier, when we said uh, genuinely being open toward each other, uh, you can only be open when you trust. If you don't trust, you cannot be open. So the openness and trust clearly comes together. So, yes, I uh, strongly yeah, encourage uh, not only... It's about trusting teacher. It's also about trusting, you know, all, all the people who are guiding the group and leading the group, working for the group and helping the group and so on. Yeah. So maybe one last question. So then we're going to finish. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Humphreys asks, um, is it possible to practice the core ideas without getting involved with the cultural trappings and the religious forms of Tibetan Buddhism? Are the prayers, songs, and particular visualizations necessary to be part of the community? So the question is that, uh, um, can one be part of the community is particularly referring to Tibetan, one of the Tibetan spiritual community, uh, without getting trapped into the cultural form, such as visualization, prayers, and so on. So if you think um, uh, the, the prayers and visualization is a trap, then I think there's some problem there. Because I think, uh, you know, as far as tra being trapped is concerned, Everything and anything can be trapped or everything, anything can be liberating. So generally speaking, if you think the prayers and a particular forms of prayers and, uh, you know, visualizations are trapped, I think it's a kind of wrong way of looking at things. You can say, well, I do not understand. Therefore, can I have another ways to practice this or not? Yes, in some degree, yes, one can have another way of engaging with the community, sacred community, uh, another way of uh, being practicing uh, with that, and and uh, without uh, following everything which does not make sense to you, or which might, if you believe, it will never make sense to you, then it's very true. You definitely there are ways you can be part of the sacred community. Um, you know, as we talked about in the early here, we talk about uh, unbounded space. Uh, it's I think universal, and we talk about the 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 genuine awareness. It's universal. We talk about the warmth of the heart. 
it's universal. So with the universal principles that is not bound any particular culture, you can kind of work practices through them and be part of the sacred community or any part of the, any sacred community, I think it should be fine. When, when you are genuinely able to be part of that, really feel that, how you say, openness um, and uh, awareness and that warmth, I, you will change your opinion about the visualizations and prayers are trap. You will say, wow, these are so beautiful prayers. Oh, these are visualizations are, it's much, much better than my pain imaginations of samsara. And you will, you will have much more another form of realization because you are open to that, because you are aware to that, because you have a warmth to feel it. Because until then, there is always space for everybody in every sacred community. So with this, I wanted to end the, uh, this webcast. And so I, you know, again, I just wanted to... Uh